Sechas Nazir Daf Zayin. We begin the eighth parak of the Masechta. We begin from the beginning of the Mishnah. They're going to be two primary sugyas. The first is discussing what happens if somebody is a Suffolk Nazir Tomei, Suffolk Nazir Tohar, or if you have two people like that. How do you get out of those Sveikos? And tomorrow we'll discuss the problem of taking a haircut in me Suffolk. We'll get into the sugya of Leisa Kifu, how that applies to taking a haircut if one is a Suffolk Nazir, how that applies to taking a haircut when the full head, and how that applies to taking a haircut for children. So let's begin. So Misha says you have two Nazirim in the middle of their Nazirs, and somebody, a third person, says to them, I saw that one of you became Tavim, and I don't know which one. So assuming that his testimony is true, they're both in the status of Suffolk Tama, but whichever one's Tama, the other one's Tahar. So what should they do? They don't know if they can finish their Naziris, if they have to bring a carbon Tomas Nazir, what should they do? So they finished their Naziris, they finished the 30 days. At the end of 30 days, one has successfully finished his Tahara, and one has Tame, and he owes a carbon Tame of a Nazir Tame. So they both bring both Kabanas together, Bashotfis, and they make it Tanai. And they say, whichever one of us is the Tame, the Tame carbon is his, whichever one of us that is the carbon designed for a Nazir Tame, whichever one of us is the Tahar, the Tahar carbon is his. Now, they still don't know which one is Tahar and he's finished, and which one was Tame, now he has to start his Naziris over again. So they both have to keep another 30 days of Naziris. The end of that 30 days, they have to bring another carbon Bashotfis. This is a regular carbon Tahara, And it only applies to one of them, because only one of them was a Nazir now for the second period. So they're going to bring this carbon Bitahara, and again, they'll say it today and say, whichever one of us was Tame. The first round, this was his Naziris, this is his carbon now, and therefore they now are the one that has this carbon for them. That's the Mishnah. So now the Gemara begins. The Gemara wants to know why is there any problem here? Why do we have to go Lachumra and assume that they were both Tameim? This is a Suffolk Tumah. We have a rule about Suffolk Tumah. We know what that is. Suffolk Tumah and Rishas Yachid is Tameim. Suffolk Tumah and Rishas Rabbim is Tahar. Now, is this a Rishas Rabbim or Rishas Yachid? So that's defined by the source of the rule of Suffolk Tumah. Source of the rule of Suffolk Tumah is a Saita. A Saita is a Suffolk, if she was Nitma or not, and the halacha is that we go to Chumrah, we assume that she was time and she's Asar on her husband until it can be cleared up. There, in her situation, the only there were only two people involved, her and whoever else she was with, the max of two people, that defines Rosh Hashanah. That means if you have three people, it's already Rosh Hashanah. So here you have three people. You have the two Nazirim and the witness who saw them. So there's three people, so it's Rosh Hashanah. And the halacha should be Suffolk, Tum, Rosh Hashanah, it should be okay. So the Gemara answers that the person who saw them was nowhere near them. He saw from a distance far away that some tumma fell on one of them and he couldn't tell which one it was and therefore they too were separate and they are considered to be Mishra Sayyach and therefore it's Safi Tumma Mishra Sayyach and he goes to the Chabra. Says the Gemara Ravashi said if you look in the Mishnah this is clear because it says that he saw them and he said and we didn't say I forgot the reason he doesn't know is because he couldn't see because he was far away not because he forgot and not because he couldn't tell that's because he was too far away and that is what causes the Safi here. All right, now the Gemara asks, it says in the Mishnah they should both take a haircut. How could they both take a haircut? One of them is not chayev in the haircut, and he's violating the iser of hakaf sarosh, of cutting off the payas of the head. Now, this Gemara's question doesn't really make sense in the way it's phrased, because the way we learn the Mishnah, they're both chayev in a carbon. One of them is finishing Naziris Tahara, one of them is finishing Naziris Batuma. They both have to take a haircut. So what's the problem? So the Rishonim learn here, they have a, a number of ways of learning. One shot is that the end of the Mishnah is what the Mishnah is referring to. Even though the end of the Mishnah doesn't say that they have to take a haircut, but you can see from the beginning of the Mishnah they have to take a haircut, that at the end of the Mishnah, when they did the second set of 30 days, they have to take a haircut there too. One of them is not chayv in that haircut, how could they take the haircut? They're both a suffix, how could they take the haircut? My suffix is an Isidaraisa. So the Gemara gives two answers. The Gemara first quotes, uh, Shmuel. Shmuel says we must be talking about a woman or a katan that don't have an iser of taking haircut. There's no iser of hakafas harish. See where it says Shmuel could have said a separate answer. He could have said that since you're shaving the whole head, it's not a violation of hakafas harish. Hakafas harish is only when you shave off part of the head and round out the corners. So obviously Shmuel does not hold of the rule that hakafas the entire rush is not a violation of hakafas. It is a violation of hakafas, and that's why I have to give the answer. We're talking about a woman or a child. Now the Gemara says that Marzutra had this entire exchange with Shmuel, but instead of being on the first part of the Mishnah, which is our Mishnah, discussing a situation where you had two Nazir and one was time we didn't know which, it's referring to the next upcoming Mishnah, where you had a Nazir who didn't know if he was a Nazir Tahar 
or if he was also Tomei, or if he was also a Metzaira ending his Tzeras. And we said, we saw this quoted on the previous staff, it'll also be the Mishnah on Dafnon test. We said that the rule there is that he ends up having to sit through four periods of Naziris for his four possibilities, that he's Tzeras, he's a Metzaira and a Tomei, and that he's just a Metzaira, that he's just a Tomei, or that he's neither. So there he has to take four haircuts. How can he do those haircuts? It's a suffix. And that suffix is going to, on the side that he's not chayev, he's getting into a haircut and he's doing a kafas harayish, iser v'le sakifu, when it, it, there's no reason to push off that iser. So on that, Shmuel gives the answer that it's a woman or a child, and therefore you don't have that issue there at all. All right, now that we're getting to a whole new studio related, which is an exchange between Rav Huna and Rav Adarava. Some verses Rav Huna said that somebody who shaves off the hair of a katan, he does like sekifu, he's makif a katan, um, Rav Huna said he's chayv, he violates the yeser. So Rav Adarava said, um, if that's true, so who takes the haircuts on your children? Why, your children, I see that they're, they are shaved, so what gives them the right to who's giving them a haircut, they're violating the Esther with their own haircuts. So uh, he answered, it's my wife. My wife's name is Chayva. So he says, Chayva, she's the one who does. And because she's a woman and she's not Chayev in Laisakifu, therefore she is allowed to give the kids a haircut. But for a man to give a haircut, that would be Esther. So Rav Ada Barav was upset with that answer and he said, let Chayva bury her children. Meaning to say, if you hold it, it's usher, then she's not allowed to do that. If it's usher to uh, cut the hair of a child, then she's not allowed to. Now, because he said that, that actually caused a curse to happen, and Chayva did bury all her children, as long as Rav Rava was alive, Rav Huna never had children who survived. It was only after he died that he was able to have children that had survived. So the one would say, what is the Machlokas between Rav Huna and Rav Adar Rava? The Machlokas seems to be, as far as we can tell, that Rav Huna says that one who cuts the hair of a cut on is violating the Isser if it's a man who's doing the haircut, but if it's a woman, it's permitted. And Rav Rava seems to be saying that there is no Isser at all. So the Gemara explains, and if, it, and if there would be an Isser, it would be the same for a man and for a woman. So the Gemara says this has nothing to do with Hakafas Kol Harash, nothing to do with the fact that the entire hair is being shaved. They obviously both hold that that's an Isser, otherwise there'd be nothing to discuss over here. The machlokas is how you darshan the pasuk. Rav Huna says it says leisakifu pasuk sheichem leisachlo says pasuk kanecha links cutting off the pace to cutting off the beard, and the iser of cutting off the pace only applies to somebody who has a beard. A woman who doesn't have a beard doesn't have the rule of cutting off the pace, and therefore she's not in the parsha. However, the rule does apply to a child. Take. Hair cutting a child is something that the hair cutter is, a vi- is in violation of, but again, it's only a man, not a woman. Rather, Ava says otherwise. He says that the makif and the nikif are both linked. They're linked together in the psukim. And therefore, anything that the there's an iser on the nikif, the one who's having his hair cut, is also an iser on the one who's doing it, even if she's a woman. And therefore, if the child is, if, if, uh, if a woman were to cut off the pace of an adult man, she would violate it just as much as he does. The reason that there's no problem for a child is because the child is a katan, and therefore he's not a bar chayiva, and there's no issue. However, according to the way Rafuna wanted to learn, if there was an issue for a child, it would be an issue for his mother as well.